Our guest this week from Pakistan is Lieutenant General Talat Masood, a retired army general and a well-known voice from Pakistan. He will analyze the changing public mood in Pakistan with respect to its army and the fate of General Musharraf. He will be joining us from Islamabad. And later in the show, to answer questions on the political situation in Nepal and its relevance to India, we will be joined by Mr. Jain Prasad, a career diplomat and the former Indian ambassador to Kathmandu. He will be joining us from New Delhi. For the first time ever in Pakistan, a former army chief and later its president, General Parvez Musharraf, could soon face charges of treason as the Nawaz Sharif government in Pakistan attempts to rewrite the rules of civil military relations in a country where the army is still a very powerful entity and their word is often unchallenged. Once Nawaz Sharif was Prime Minister and Parvez Musharraf was General. Then 14 years ago came the coup and Sharif was ousted. Now all these years later Sharif is Prime Minister and Musharraf, once dictator of Pakistan, is on trial for treason and at the mercy of the Sharif government. The government of Pakistan has General Parvez Musharraf against Article 6 Musharraf returned to Pakistan in March 2013 after years of self-imposed exile, imagining Pakistani voters would make him Prime Minister. Instead, he was banned from politics for life and charged in several criminal cases. Now, if he's found guilty of treason, there could be a death penalty. It was Parvez Musharraf who badly damaged the image of armed forces. Moreover, I think since the politicians and religious leaders have learnt a lesson, army is also going to review and it has reviewed its policies. Musharraf says he cannot be held responsible for events leading to the emergency in Pakistan in November 2007 that the Supreme Court will have to summon hundreds of people from governors to core commanders who were involved. He says this is a vicious attempt by the Pakistani government to undermine the country's military. I feel that he will get a clean chit. He will be dry clean of all the dirt which people wanted to throw on him and he will emerge as a democratic leader and his credentials as a Democrat have gone very high because he has submitted himself to the majesty of law and to, to the rule of law. Adopts a positive approach. Pakistan has been ruled by the army for over three decades, about half its existence, but no ruler or top military commander has ever faced criminal prosecution until Musharraf's return from exile in April. Many in the Pakistani government say Musharraf's trial is only to set a precedent about the supremacy of law over any individual and is not about political vendetta against the former dictator. Others say the government is only trying to divert attention from the real threats Pakistan faces. Nawaz Sharif and army seem to be engaged in some kind of a power tussle in which Nawaz Sharif wants to come out on the top and hence this last minute thing, otherwise all the courts had exempted him and given him bail so that he could go to Dubai as he wanted. But just before he was to go, there was this fresh charge which, was, uh, which the government decided to uh, impose on him. Uh, it was always all along talked about, but it seemed that government had been hesitating to, fresh, uh, to press this charge. This is the first time that a civilian institution has challenged a military dictator, one who ruled with an iron hand for nearly a decade in Pakistan. The question is, will it set the course for Pakistan to evolve as a progressive and democratic state in the years to come? Opinion is still divided on the extent to which Pakistan's civilian government can go to punish a military leader for subverting their constitution. And our guest on this show, Lieutenant General Talat Masood, is a retired three-star general of the Pakistan Army, and he will examine the evolving nature of civil-military relations in Pakistan. General Masood, my first question is, what would you regard as General Musharraf's biggest mistake, 
his misadventure in Kargil that led to his stiff with Nawaz Sharif and the coup or his return to Pakistan? Well, I would say that uh, there have been many mistakes on the part of Musharraf, although he has done some good things as well. But obviously, one of the major blunders that he made was Kargil, for which uh, I think he himself acknowledges that, although he doesn't say that in public. And um, that resulted in Pakistan suffering a lot uh, and uh, <clears throat> being humiliated uh, and uh, unnecessarily gave a, a huge advantage to India. And also <clears throat> the Kashmir cause suffered as a consequence. So I think in many ways, <clears throat> Kargil was a great blunder. Why is it that General Musharraf is being blamed for treason and not the earlier military rulers of Pakistan? What has changed in the civil military equation of Pakistan now? Well, I, they think that probably the civilian leaders, most of them either are, they are uh, uh, dead, uh, they are not alive, and uh, at the same time it becomes extremely difficult and problematic to dig up uh, past cases and then what would they achieve by it? But uh, they think uh, the civilian government, and I think rightly thinks that, that you know there is a time when you have to uh, sort of take on the military in that sense that they can't continue uh, to undermine democracy and um, go unpunished. So uh, I think uh, this is the result that they had even um, as a part of an electoral promise, and I think they're trying to fulfill that. But at the same time, they have to be very careful um, that they don't give an impression of uh, showing vendetta or uh, any personal vengeance. Uh, it should be much more <clears throat> broad-based and not selective uh, in uh, prosecution. It was said that General Musharraf had the backing of the powerful army as General Kiani was his hand-picked man. But with General Kiani due to retire now, isn't the timing of the trial now too much of a coincidence? No, I think um, the timing is also related to the fact that there are other problems from which uh, this government may be wanting to deflect attention uh, because I think the timing is not uh, appropriate for the simple reason that the military is undergoing a lot of challenges. And I think uh, bringing about this will also psychologically, if not politic and politically, burden uh, the military in many ways, uh, which could have been avoided. A more suitable uh, or an opportune moment should have been found, uh, especially when the government was far more confident and had already shown a certain level of performance. Uh, th then it would have been better uh, to sort of undertake this case and not only uh, uh, do a selective sort of prosecution of Musharraf, but also, um, you, you know, um, bring all those others who are also responsible uh, for uh, supporting him uh, in the coup, uh, or were even directly or indirectly re responsible to bring them also to justice. Uh, I think that would have been a more fairer way of handling this case. Is the trial of General Musharraf aimed at punishing him for all that he's blamed for, or is it to convey a strong message to a future coup leader in Pakistan? Well, Mr. Raza, I think um, it uh, works both ways. Uh, in, in a way, it also punishes, uh, if at all, uh, the, you know, he's convicted um, General Musharraf. Uh, then, of course, the message would be there. But at the same time, the message is also to the army and also uh, to the civilian population that now, uh, you know, we are su sufficiently secure and we feel confident that we can take on the army and do not now rely on the army. We, it is the political forces that are going to now remain uh, in control and will run the affairs of the country. And there is no question of a reversion uh, to the army. Clearly, the times have changed in Pakistan, and it seems that GHQ Rahul Pindi will now go along with the public mood, as they had done in previous attempts when they were invited by the people to take over the country. Coming up next on Latitude, despite a record voter turnout, even as the Maoists alleged rigging, there is still little optimism on whether the elections itself can address Nepal's biggest challenge of framing a constitution.